2019 is a really important year in the history of the Department of Family and Community Medicine here at the University of Toronto because it's our 50th year, our golden anniversary, and it provides an opportunity to look back and to reflect on how this department developed, to remember uh, many of the amazing family doctors who founded and helped to grow this department over its first 50 years, but it's also an opportunity to look forward and look forward to the next 50 years and beyond. Fred Fallis and Doug Johnson and I went to the um, faculty council meeting in the spring of 1969, fully expecting to get turned down. At the very last minute, Fred Fallis said, let's call it family and community medicine. He said, I think that's a, that might be, be a good idea. Nobody else had thought of that. And, and much to our stunned surprise, it passed quite smoothly. Very little debate, no real harsh comments, and we were there. I was involved at the very, at the very beginning. I believe he was, I was the first resident in the department. I worked with, very closely with Reg Perkin, who was, I think, the first, one of the first directors of the department. Uh, we were able to experiment and to grow a lot of different programs and this was before there was really any other major formal faculty development anywhere else in the Faculty of Medicine. And it was because we didn't have a hundred year tradition of how do you teach internal medicine or how do you teach surgery. We were really creating that both in Toronto but also in Canada. I was one of the very first research scholars when Walter Rosser established the research program in 1995. I was one of the first people who was lucky enough to participate in that. That was really fun. That's when I started to get a real sense of what it meant to be an academic family doctor. I joined the medical staff of the newly opened Scarborough General Hospital and became the chief of family medicine in 1991. At that time, the University of Toronto Department of Family and Community Medicine underwent its first expansion uh, from a moderate-sized department uh, of downtown teaching hospitals to a much larger department with four community hospitals in Toronto's suburbs. One of the images I have of the DFCM is just really, really talented, energetic, committed, people who would just step up to the plate to try something. So a lot of innovation in this department. So those are, that's sort of an image I have of the department. So if you were to count up all the patients who could um, say that they have a family doctor that's associated with DFCM, it's to the order of about a million people. So just that sheer volume of care. Over time, we've graduated fully one third of Ontario's family doctors. So family medicine is the perfect window into the human experience. You learn so much about people, about their lives. You become witness to their secrets. There are things that you know about patients that nobody else knows about. You have this massive vault of information that you are the keeper of. And that's one of your key obligations is to keep those uh, witnessed statements of your patient because they're feeling free to trust you with their deepest, most vulnerable aspects of themselves. So family medicine, wow. Yeah, I think people don't realize how much of research is about working in teams and working uh, in close collaboration with other people. And um, I've had some really fun experiences at the DFCM working in great teams. So working with Rick Glazier or Ava Grunfeld as my mentors, doing some really cool research with Tara Kieran or with Deanna Telner at Toronto East. It's just been nice that there's such a great collection of people at the DFCM um, that we can all come together with our different interests and find ways that we can work together and have fun on a daily basis. I think we're prepared to innovate as we have started to do educationally with new types of programs to producing leaders, to figuring out how to bring enhanced skills and areas of special interest in clinical practice into comprehensive care. So we're going to do that on the education side as well as the clinical side. And I'm hoping that we will be leaders in turning family medicine residency into three-year training programs, which itself will create enormous opportunity to develop doctors in a more sophisticated, more comprehensive way so that they can take on the leadership and, and important roles that will be necessary for what's changing out there in healthcare. 
So it was visionary that Lynn Wilson and Phil Ellison took it upon themselves to start this quality improvement program at the DFCM at a time where no other academic department in Canada had a separate quality program. And they had a vision of the importance of that, of really dedicating education time and teaching faculty also about quality improvement methods and vision for improving quality. So they had a great vision around that and then they were able to implement it. We have now a residency curriculum that I think is the envy of many academic institutions across the country and is unique internationally. So we've really led the way, I think, in how to train physicians around understanding and improving quality of care. We are really, um, you know, establishing some really, really important benchmarks um, for the direction that family medicine research can go. We, we have internationally recognized faculty and we're also developing uh, more of our faculty having international reputation. Of all of our international groups in particular, those for the TIPS program, the Toronto International Program that come from all over the world and to watch these people um, often in the first minutes of the course and often before the course actually uh, begins, ch learn about each other and, and recognize that they're actually not alone in, in really working hard to advance family medicine, not alone in the world, not alone in academia, that there's this whole community. That's always a particularly delicious moment. Dr. Kidd has uh, prioritized the social determinants of health, which is my own personal interest, and is really thinking big and broadly and thinking on a global level. Um, so I really see DFCM being even more of a leader at the forefront of, of education, using technology, being innovative, and then scaling to, to really have a global impact. The, the biggest impact over the years would have to be the extraordinary people we've trained. And there's always a sense of connection and belonging and the people that take with them this superb education. So to me, being a family doctor is the best job on earth. Being able to accompany our patients through the ups and downs of their health and their lives and contribute in some way to smoothing out some of those experiences for them is incredibly rewarding. It's a real privilege. It's just a, a bunch of gems, you know, of people and, uh, and who really genuinely want to support one another. I think that that's very special. Our family medicine has become a lot more complex and that the kind of comprehensive physician that we want to train seems to be much more of a challenge. And I think that the team is the one that's going to provide this comprehensiveness. Yes, the physician can be well trained to be able to, but there is a limit. And as things become more complex, it's going to be more difficult for one person to know everything and be able to do as much as possible in the future. So I've always think that the comprehensiveness should be coming out of the team and not necessarily from individual physicians. There's a tremendous amount that family medicine needs to be proud of in terms of leading the way from all the way from healthcare all the way through our, uh, our education and, and some of our research that we're doing. Yeah, this is a very strong academic department of family medicine, uh, one of the strongest and one of the largest departments of family medicine in the world. And it has a fantastic research, it has a very good international reputation for the quality of the education being provided, and there's a lot of innovation happening here as well. Medical practice and knowledge are changing so quickly that we cannot foretell the future. But it is our responsibility to prepare future physicians for the ability to deal with all of these exciting changes that are about to come. I think we are prepared for this challenge. You know, I come back at this point in my life and, and look, I just it just blows me away because we were so small and so insignificant in terms of the numbers and the funding and everything when we started. And here and now I'm sitting in, in what in the offices of what is the largest department of family medicine at any university in the world. And it just blows me away.